Hey, what's up guys? In this video lesson, we will demonstrate how to trigger CSS3 transition animations using JavaScript. This will help designers and developers avoid requiring bulky third-party libraries to have smooth, buttery animations at work in their web applications and on their web pages. So JavaScript is simply the trigger that calls the CSS transition animation to run exactly when needed. And CSS is the technology making the animated magic happen and you can target any events of the document that you want. Okay, now we'll put the concept to code and create a few examples to show how it all works. So we'll start with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. And in the head element, we're going to need a style element to put our CSS. And we're also going to put in a script element. And this is where we'll place our JavaScript. Okay, in the body element, let's create a div element and let's give it an ID that's equal to box1. And we'll close that div element. And in the inner HTML, you can just put some dummy content. Now up in the style element, we're going to put our CSS to affect that box one, that div with an ID of box one. So we say div ID of box one gets these specific CSS properties applied to it. And if we run that in our favorite browser software, we can see what it looks like live in the browser. Now we're going to start tying in some JavaScript. So what we'll do is we'll create a button and this is really just for developer purposes. It's going to show you how you can target any events you want. And the event I'm going to go for is on click. And you see all these events? These are user interaction events that you can target. And there's also a whole myriad of other events that you can target in JavaScript for the document. Okay, so for the simple demonstration, we'll just target on click. So you can see our box has a default background when the page loads in the CSS of this light blue color. So what we're going to do is create a JavaScript function in a second called change BG. Open close parentheses and you can put a semicolon there if you like. So that means now up in your JavaScript here you have to have a function with that name change BG. So you say function change BG and you put your opening curly brace there. Go down a couple of lines and put your closing curly brace. And you have your nice function nest all set up and ready to go. Now this function change BG, I want to feed it two custom parameters or two custom arguments. And what I want to send in is the ID of the element that I want to affect on the page, which happens to be box one in my case. And the color of the background, I want to change that too. And this is a magenta color. So actually in the inner HTML of your button now, you can put the word magenta. So the logic of our function is we want to change, animate, we want to change in an animated sort of way the background color of that box from its original starting value to this magenta color. So now we have to access those two incoming arguments that we made. So we'll call the first one EL, short for the element that we want to affect. And then the next argument will be color. So we'll just make it CLR for short. So we have the element and the color. Now we'll use EL and CLR to represent those values in our function. Now the first thing within the function is we'll target the element by using get element by ID. So we make a variable called LM and we make it equal to document get element by ID and we send the element string into the get element by ID parameter. So now we have an object reference for that element. Now once that element is accessed in JavaScript, you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. So I'm going to start targeting its CSS properties. So once you target that element's style property, you can then access, like for instance, any of the CSS properties you want. Border, background, color, blah, 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 whatever. The width, the, the left position, the top position, if you want to move things around, animate them that way. The height, the width. If you want to make a box slide into and out of view in an animated sort of way, you can target the width and height of an element. But if you want to have an animation before you change that uh, CSS property, you can just put the transition CSS property at work before you change the element's color, its position, or whatever. So in this case, the transition settings that I want to have are these. And what this is is shorthand CSS for assigning all of the transition properties in one line. And I suggest doing it that way. So you can set the transition property. And in my case, I want to target the background color of that element. 
and then the duration of the animation that means how much time it takes to occur which you can make that half a second if you want right now it's set to one second so over one second my animation will change from a blue background on that element to the magenta color and it's going to be a linear animation and here's where you set your timing function for your uh, transition settings so if you want to have ease in you can make this ease in instead of linear or you can make it ease out or you can make it ease in out and it helps control the way that the animation tweens and this last setting is for your uh, this is a uh, oh, what the hell is the last setting this is a an offset or a delay rather so if I was to set this to two seconds my animation would delay two seconds but I don't want any delay. I want it to occur exactly when I call it. But just keep in mind that you can set a delay for any of your animations whenever you need. Now I can change the elements style dot background color and all of its background settings to whatever I want. And all I want to do is change the color. So I'll put CLR right there. And what that does is it applies this hexadecimal color value to the background property of this box one but we have a transition set here so we're gonna see an animation if I was to comment out this transition line in JavaScript and then run this application you'll see what happens my box should go from blue to magenta instantly you see there's no animation but watch this we just put this one line into effect and watch what we get press F12 run it in your favorite browser now click the magenta button so let's refresh that and try it again you see it's a, a much smoother way to transition so you can create any animations you want using any CSS properties you want and remember how I just had this uh, commented out we've all been uh, accessing and changing CSS properties using JavaScript in this way for years but now that transition is a new CSS 3 property we can actually put that into effect in our JavaScript right before we change an elements CSS properties. So what we can do is now take another button and we'll copy that button and make another button under it and we're going to target box one again and instead of magenta we'll turn it into a green color so we'll change this label to green. Now let's grab another button and we'll label that one original and we'll make it the original hexadecimal color value of the light blue. So now run that in your favorite browser. So now I can animate this box from blue to magenta, then magenta to green, from green back to the original blue. So you see how that works? So I know a lot of people know about CSS3 transition property, but they have not caught on to the fact that they can now use JavaScript to trigger these animations at any time in their application flow, and that's the important part. Usually people, designers who are putting animations into effect, they can only target when the page loads. So they'll have their animations, uh, for instance, in the CSS, which makes it static. That means you can't call it really uh, when you want, unless you're using pseudo selectors like hover. So you can call these kind of animations using, for instance, a pseudo selector like hover. But I would say using JavaScript opens up a whole lot more interaction uh, where you can target so many more different events and user interaction to call your animations to run. For instance, since we have this in JavaScript now, these two lines could be used. You can run these two lines of code, for instance, when an Ajax request gets done. So you can animate any kind of element that you want on the page right when an Ajax request is completed. Okay, now I'm going to do some different examples to show you guys how powerful this can be. So I'm going to change this function to fade in. Instead of change BG, it'll be named fade in. And I don't need these other buttons. I just want one button. Actually, I'm going to start with a fade out function. And I don't need this color parameter or the color argument. And I don't need to pass the argument here when I call the function to run in the on click event. So let's make sure that function says fade out. We're targeting box one and we'll change the label to fade out. Now, instead of targeting background, you target the opacity CSS property 
for that box. Then we say element.style.opacity is equal to zero since we're fading out. Press Control S, run it in your favorite browser software, and fade out. Beautiful. Now, what if you want a fade in? All you have to do is copy that function, create a fade in function, or actually you can make one function that goes both ways, but I'm just gonna, for this simple example, I'll just show you a fade in and fade out function separately. And all you have to do in this one is change this to a one because opacity settings go from zero to one. So for instance, if you have an opacity setting of 0 0.5, that means half transparent. And then all we need here is another button called fade in that calls the fade in function to run. And we'll change this word to fade in. Now run that in your favorite browser. So we fade out and we fade in. Fade out and fade in. Now what if I want that animation to go a little bit faster? I can just change this 1.0 to 0 0.5. And now it'll take half a second in its animation duration. Run it in your favorite browser, fade out, it's a lot faster now. Fade in, fade out, fade in, fade out, fade in, fade out, fade in. Okay, now let's change these function names from fade out and fade in to slide open. And this one, slide closed. And instead of targeting the opacity in our transition, we're gonna target the height of the element. So we'll change this one from height and also this one to height. And since we're targeting the height in the transition, we have to make sure we're changing the height in the actual event. So we'll change it there and there. So when we slide open, we want it to be 200 pixels. Make sure we put that in double quotes or single quotes. And then when it slides closed, we want it to go back to zero pixels. So we'll change it to default zero pixel when the page loads for that box one and we'll change these uh, function names on the buttons in the on click event to slide closed on the first one and slide open on the next one. And we'll just put that in the label as well. Make this one slide closed. And actually we'll make a default 200 when the page loads. So let's see if this works now. I'm gonna slide closed, slide open, slide closed, slide open. And actually the timing on that and you can make that happen even faster by putting that on 0.2 seconds and in the CSS if you don't want the words to show for instance uh, you see how when we run it in the browser we slide closed you can still see the content in the box one but you don't want to be able to see that content really so you can hide it by setting the overflow property to hidden so now when we run this in our favorite browser we'll see that when we slide closed all the content is closed up now. Slide open and it all comes back. Okay? Okay, so that shows you another example. And you guys are aware of so many different uh, properties in CSS that you can target and animate. I'm just going to show a few examples, but there's so many CSS properties that are animatable. Okay, now I'm going to go up into the CSS and remove the overflow property. And I'm going to set a position property for this element. I'm going to make it absolute. Then I'm going to give it a top property of let's say 50 pixels or maybe 100 pixels. So it'll be off of the top of the page 100 pixels. And then the left property, which I'm going to set to negative 400 pixels. And since my box is actually exactly 400 pixels wide, it will just be off screen to the left. So you really won't be able to see it by default when the page loads because it's going to be hiding just off to the left of the screen. Now here in my transition for the element, what I'm going to do is change these from uh, height to left. So let's change this one to left. Let's change the name of these functions to slide in and slide out. So when it slides in, we want it to have a zero left property in an animated sort of way. Then in this function, we want the left property to be minus 400 again. So we can just copy that and put it right there. So make sure that says minus 400 pixels. And that will be your function that slides it back out of view, back off to the left. 
So you have slide in, slide out, and make sure that your buttons correspond with those function names. So let's make the first button this time slide in, and the second button control the slide out. And we'll change this to slide in, and this to slide out. And let's change this animation back to one second duration, just so we see it real nice. Control S to save the file, and run it in your favorite browser software. So let's press slide in, and slide out. Slide in, slide out. Let's change the timing on that. Uh, what we're going to do is change the timing function, actually. In this case, we want an animation to uh, ease. So we'll ease it in when it slides in. And instead of linear on the slide out, let's change that to ease out. And we'll change this back to 0 0.5 seconds. So half a second duration on that animation. Control S, press F12. And let's change this from uh, 100 top to 50 top. Press F12. So you can see the slide in and slide out now have an ease in and ease out factor to their timing function. Okay, so that shows you a whole bunch of examples that will get you rolling and get you experimenting with all the animatable properties in CSS. And remember, like I said, there's a ton of animatable properties in CSS. And these don't even have to be on click. This can be any event you want, like on mouse over. So instead of me clicking that button, me just putting my mouse over that button will make the box slide out. So let's check that out. Let's make it slide in by clicking the first button. Now watch, I'm not going to click the second button, I'm just going to put my mouse over it. See? Now if you really want to know in depth about everything you can do regarding this concept, you can go to develop PHP and check out the in the CSS library. You can click on the CSS level 3 properties and I just put in the transition, the documentation for the transition properties. And these are all of the transition properties you can play with. You can also familiarize yourself with the animation properties and that deals with setting keyframe animations. But for the most part all you'll need is transitions to do most of the things that you do, uh, for instance using third party JavaScript libraries that are really bulky. All of those kind of animations can be done with uh, CSS3 transitions nowadays. So you can check out all of the values for, the, say, if you want to understand the timing functions better. When I was setting the linear ease in and ease out and all that stuff, if you want to understand all these timing functions better, you can go ahead and take a look at this. Now, in the JavaScript library at Develop PHP, you see I clicked on JavaScript library and DOM event list JavaScript. This is what you really want to take a look at because this will help you target all of the window events and the document events as well as some user interaction events. Okay, so all of these things that I'm showing you right now are tied into the concepts that we were just talking about in this video tutorial. So to really get good at using uh, CSS3 transitions and using JavaScript to trigger those transitions you really want to understand all of the events that you have at your disposal. All the HTML events, uh, for instance, if you go into HTML library, into the HTML fundamental section, I have HTML event attributes. You can also check all of these out. So on blur, you fire off your JavaScript function. On change, fire off your JavaScript function. On click, on focus, on input, on key down, on key press. Look into all this stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? All right, so I hope this tutorial on triggering CSS3 transition animations using JavaScript helps a lot of us move away from using third-party bulky JavaScript libraries to do simple animations that can be performed, transition animations that can be performed using CSS3. And you'll notice that a lot of developers kind of have the feeling that, that if something can be done in CSS, that it's better to just use CSS for that functionality rather than have a scripting language take care of it. So in past tutorials, I've showed you guys how to use loops, timed loops, to animate your CSS properties, but we don't have to use timed loops anymore to do simple animations like these. We can simply add one line in your JavaScript that sets the transition settings for whatever you're about to change. And no loops are needed. It's really 
slim, clean, lightweight way to do things.